question you have 20 minutes of lecture and 10 minutes of question and answer interaction respectively and during the interaction time students may use the question and answer window or chat window to raise their questions all the students are requested to maintain a classroom decorum throughout the session johnson sir will be available online throughout the entire one hour session so you may please start the session good afternoon everybody can, can you hear my voice okay we can start now today afternoon we will start the topic of advanced control system it's actually module 5 of that particular subject advanced control system the exact topic is an introduction to the non linear system as the author says i am dr johnson y associate professor in electrical department at northumada college of engineering science and technology trivandrum okay sorry now we can start um my lecture outline consists of the introduction types and characteristics classification and the state space model and the analysis of the non linear control system in which i describe a little bit about the scaling function method and all of you know about the nonlinear systems the nonlinear systems is nothing but the input and output are not in proportional with each other that means the input increases the output may not increases in a linear manner there can be a nonlinear characteristic is there the proportionality is not linear it's a well known fact that many relationships among quantities are quite linear although they are often approximated by linear equations mainly for mathematical simplicity for mathematical simplicity only we approximate uh, the system by using the linear equations and this simplifications may be satisfactory as long as the resulting solutions are in agreement with the experimental results if the resulting solutions and the experimental results are matched with each other then we may say that the simplification is satisfactory but if, if they are not matched with each other we will not say the mathematical simplification is okay so that is an introduction and next uh, we move to the definition of non linear system non linear system is a type of system where the output from the system does not vary directly with respect to the input to the system so input and output are not directly direct relation direct linear linear relation and then the question arises why we study the non linear systems this is because all of the physical systems in the world are non linear in nature so uh it is difficult to uh, manipulate or it is difficult to uh, configure the systems in the nature by linear mathematics so we use the non linear mathematics or non linear modeling of the system and how we can model the non linear system we can model the non linear systems using non linear mathematical model 
And this nonlinear mathematical model will be consist of nonlinear differential equations. So it is the fact that the, no, the nonlinear mathematical models or mathematical tools are more available more as compared to the linear mathematical models. But each tool is universally applicable to all the systems in a fruit, 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 fruitful manner. For example, some systems may be applicable to some nonlinear systems and the others may be applicable to some other systems. So, every single tool is universally applicable to all the systems. So, according to the different conditions or different contexts, we use different types of uh, nonlinear mathematical equations or tools. You know that the, in the linear domain, mainly we use the matrix algebra. But in the nonlinear domain, we use the functional analysis and differential geometry. So these are the two major mathematical tools for analyzing the nonlinear systems. So here uh, we can see a spring model and two colors are shown, one is red and the other one is blue. This blue color represents a linear spring model. Sorry, uh, red color represents a linear spring model. Here the force is proportional uh, to the uh, displacement or distance moved by the spring. So when the force increases, the spring movement also increases in a linear manner. There is a straight line we can see. But the second thing here, the uh, blue line here is a nonlinear spring model, where the equation, when you see that, that equation is actually a nonlinear character because uh, there is a cube, cube of x that actually shows the uh, nonlinear character of, of the system, nonlinear system. So, uh, yeah, yeah. This actually here we can see that here actually it is shifting from the uh, linear region or linear character. It is it's shifting and it is uh, deviating to this way. And this mainly due to this, uh, the presence of this x cube, x cube component is here. That's why it is uh, have this type of uh, character is happening here. So next, hello. Okay. Next, uh, we we go to the types of nonlinear systems. And uh, we know that there are mainly two types of nonlinear systems. One is static and the other one is dynamic. And what is the difference between static and dynamic systems? The static systems involves a differential equation. Sorry, it doesn't involve a differential equation. Whereas the dynamic uh, nonlinearity can be represented by using a nonlinear differential equation. So the differential equation uh, will determine whether the system is static or dynamic. The static, the static is, uh, there is no need of differential equation and can't be modeled the system through the only linear differential equation, the static case. Whereas in dynamic case, just, uh, just a reverse case that a nonlinear differential equation is must or it is uh, important for the modeling of a dynamic system. And when we go to the characteristics of a nonlinear system, we can see the first and the most important one is the principle of superposition is not obeyed by a nonlinear system. The principle of superposition is uh, very much known to you, the audience, uh, most of the students uh, in, in your previous semesters. Principle of superposition involves linearity as well as homogeneity. For example, the input is X and uh, the input produces an output Y. If the input is uh, applied with a gain k, or if the input is kx, then the output is also ky. So the, the multiplication by k is applicable to both input and output. So that means it is linear. And homogeneity represents, say, suppose if x1 and x2 are two inputs, and if x1 produces an output y, y1, and x2 produces an output, then the sum of x1 and x2 
will produce or must produce an output y1 and y1 plus y2. The x1 plus x2 will give y1 plus y2. That principle is not applicable in nonlinear systems. And there are other, another important thing is that there are isolated multiple of isolated equilibrium points in the nonlinear systems. Then equilibrium point means uh, the point where the derivative becomes zero. The change in the variable, change in the value of the variable will be zero in the nearby region. Then that point, uh, uh, change in the derivative is zero at a particular point. That particular point is called equilibrium point. And the isolated equilibrium point means that in the nearby point, around the equilibrium point, uh, there are no such equilibrium points there. It's only isolated. Such equilibrium points are isolated equilibrium points, and here there are number of isolated equilibrium points are possible in a nonlinear system. And another characteristic is it has a bifurcation and chaos. Chaos. Bifurcation is an important thing where the characteristic of a system will diverge or change into different branches, and then again the characteristics will again change into different branches. So, it's a bifurcated way. And that, that's an important thing, but we will not discuss in detail. And Chaos is actually the irregularity of a system. That these both character, characteristics are available in the nonlinear system. And the finite, finite escape time. Uh, that means that the solutions of nonlinear systems is not available in all the time. Because the solutions of a nonlinear system will be available only for a particular time or particular range. And after that, after that, the solution will vanish. And then again comes another solution. That means it will escape within a finite time. So this, that is called the finite escape time. And then there is a subharmonic, harmonic, or almost periodic oscillations are uh, possible here. Because when we give an input, a sinusoidal input to the nonlinear system, we can see there are a lot of harmonics are present, uh, subharmonics are present, and a periodic type of oscillations will be present in output. So that is actually a characteristic. And if the nonlinearity is said to be multivariable, then we, we say that or we infer from that the functions of uh, more than one variable is present here. Functions of more than one variable. That non-linearity is maybe due to the function of more than one variable. Such type of non-linear non-linearity as called uh, multi-variable uh, non-linearity. Okay. I think this is clear to you. And then uh, we move to another slide. Then again the characteristics will continue. Here, uh, some more characteristics are here. Frequency amplitude dependency. The nonlinear system will depend on the amplitude of the system, of the input, as well as the frequency. If the amplitude increases, it is highly sensitive to the input amplitude. If the amplitude increases, the, the, the system's character will be not predictable. It may change to an abrupt, abrupt change, a sudden change that will be possible. And that each one will be discussed later in the coming slides. And multi valued response means uh, the system will, non -linear, non linear system will have different values at a particular time. That is possible. But in a linear system, it will not be possible because for a particular time, there will be only one value. Here it is multiple values. And jump resonance, another important thing jump of response amplitude with. Frequency. That means as the frequency changes, the response of the system will be changed drastically. So here, uh, jump resonance is an important characteristic. And the limit cycle. Limit cycle means the response oscillations with the fixed amplitude and frequency. The response is actually an oscillation, and that oscillation is having a fixed amplitude and frequency at a particular frequency. So it's just like a periodic oscillation, not like a sinusoidal pattern. It's a, just a cross type of curves. And the limit cycle, it's a limit cycle. This, uh, all these things will be 
the child in the current life. So frequency appointment means the limit cycle frequency is enranked by a forcing frequency. Uh, we apply a forcing frequency, a signal with a particular frequency and that frequency will enrain or, or that will contain the limit cycle frequency. That will uh, contain, that will uh, ഫ്രീക്വൻസി <laughs> frequency or forcing at another frequency then we can quench the system or quench the limit cycle of the nations that is called the asynchronous quench then okay then when we go into detail the frequency amplitude dependency we can see that a spring system a mechanical system uh, which consists of a spring and mass and a damper uh, here the differential equation of the system is mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx plus k dash x cube equals 0 where x is the distance moved by this spring distance moved moved by this spring and x dot is the velocity of that particular uh, moment x double dot is the acceleration m is the uh, mass here so this is the equation and k is the spring constant and k dash is actually uh, which is mostly connected with the non linear characteristics so k x plus k dash x cube is a non linear spring force this together is a non linear spring force and here we can see that the parameters m that is mass m b that is damping and k the spring constant these are positive constants while this k dash can be positive or negative if k dash is positive then we, we say that the spring is a hard spring and if k dash is negative it is called a soft spring so here uh we can uh, move to the next slide then it will be clear in the next slide slide the solution is shown here the solution of uh, this system is here it's a damped oscillation and uh, there are three conditions uh, if k dash is positive and k dash is zero and k dash is negative if k dash is positive what we can say is that the the oscillations that will damp but the free frequency will reduce as k k dash increases the frequency will reduce as the time progresses whereas the second figure we can see the frequency remains unchanged or frequency is zero sorry uh, frequency remains unchanged for k dash equals zero but here also the damping will occurs and in the third figure we can see uh, the k dash is negative here the damping happens but the frequency uh, increases as the time progress so depending on k dash or depending on the non linear characteristics of the system the frequency will change as well as the amplitude is changing so both are changing so that means the frequency and amplitude are dependent on the input signal next okay uh, next next figure figure is also dependent on that here k dash is uh, zero here uh, the, that means at that time the frequency is constant and if k dash is greater than zero the frequency is increasing and if the k dash is less than zero less than zero that means here also be dependence so this is another graph here and then a 
next characteristic is the multi-valued response that I have told earlier. The multi-valued response means for a particular frequency. You can see for a particular frequency. Say here. Here uh, the values are multi-valued because 2 and 3 are the two points at a particular frequency. 2 is a value and 3 is another value for a same frequency that is it's multi valued And the gem response means the characteristics will change abruptly. For example, the characteristic is moving like this, the is moving like this. At this particular time, uh, the, the, the response is changing. This is in the forward direction, this is in the backward direction. That means the characteristics is completely changing. Or it's phase reversing, complete phase reversal happens. So this is called a jump response. So uh, this is another characteristic. And then, ah, here I already said the subharmonic and superharmonic oscillations. For a spring mass damper system, it exhibits a periodic oscillations. And here we apply an input. Uh, giving an input of fixed amplitude and frequency, there produces an output uh, of another frequency, and the output frequency can be may not be the same as the input frequency. It can be a multiple of the input frequency or a sub multiple of the input frequency. So that depends. Anyway, uh, there is the output is having a complex signal which consists of so many frequencies. And that frequency is actually the Fourier components. That mathematics is called Fourier mathematics. So Fourier uh, mathematics, Fourier analysis is normally used to analyze what are the components inside the output of a nonlinear system when subjected to a sinusoidal input. So then, okay. Then I have already said the limit cycle. Limit cycle is nothing but it's a self-sustained oscillation, self-excited oscillations. We giving a, a particular frequency input, then the output oscillates. That output oscillations is self-excited oscillation, and because it's not a forced system, there is no uh, forced input is here. The output limit cycle is having a uh, fixed frequency and also just a fixed amplitude and that will continue forever but not like the sinusoidal signal. It will uh, move in a periodic manner just like an orbit. And here depending on the value of uh, x, the damping will be negative or so just positive. That depends on the nonlinear character characteristic. Then another important thing is uh, frequency Quenching, frequency quenching, I have all, uh, sorry, frequency entrainment. Frequency entrainment, I have already said. Uh, here, the forcing frequency is here, that is W. This is a periodic uh, force of frequency omega that is applied to a system. And let omega zero be the limit cycle frequency. Omega zero be the limit cycle frequency. And what happens when these two join together, what happens is that at some particular points, here the, uh, sorry, at some particular points, we can see, say here, here uh, the, max, the magnitude is maximum because these two maximum magnitudes, magnitudes will superimpose, that will produce a high magnitude. And at this particular point, we can see uh, having low response because the positive of this frequency will act with the negative or the topmost part is acting with the lowermost part of this uh, signal. That will produce a low amplitude. So such type of characteristics is happen. Here we can see these, uh, these frequencies are enriched by using this forcing frequency. Here only the uh, high amplitude is available. The low amplitude is uh, actually completely dumped out or enriched by using this system. So this is a characteristic. And then, uh, 
Oh, this also the frequency entrainment we can see here delta omega. That part is the uh, low the system signal having the lowest magnitude. That part is actually entrained. That is the frequency entrainment. And the synchronous is also similar to the frequency entrainment. Here in a nonlinear system, it exhibits a limit cycle of a particular frequency. And it is possible to quench these limit cycle oscillations by forcing the system at another frequency omega 1. So then the quenching, the limit cycle quenching is possible. Uh, uh, absence of limit cycle may be possible. That, that is called asynchronous quenching. And uh, actually uh, we move to the uh, next section. But I think that uh, the time, 20 minutes time is yes, uh, yes, part of the presentation is over. Yeah. Okay. First, uh, for, from the first 20 uh, minutes lecture, I have received two questions. Uh, so the first question is, what is, what is actually beat frequency? How it is a factor of frequency entrainment? Ah, okay, okay, good question. The beat frequency is actually uh, the the superimposing of these uh, two inputs. Here, W, w or omega. Omega is the uh, input forcing frequency and omega zero is the uh, limit cycle frequency. The superimposing of these two systems will produce uh, a set of high, uh, high amplitude inputs and a low amplitude section. And uh, this high amplitude section, that means it produces a beat there. For, uh, for, for that I uh, discuss in detail about the example of a tuning fork. And here tuning fork is having uh, 256 and 257 second per second. Both are the frequencies of a tuning fork. And uh, we, we can see that when we uh, combine these two frequencies, these tuning of frequencies we when we combine together what we see we see a compression of one wave and the refraction of the other wave the compression of one frequency and the refraction of the other frequencies and this joining this joining is actually called the beat frequency okay sir that was clear another question is uh, what is post system for force system, okay. Force system means uh, when we give an input to a system, when we give an input to a system, uh, that system is said to be a force system. It's a force system. Because if uh, there are so many types of systems, systems in which there are uh, absence of input is possible, such types of systems are called autonomous systems. In autonomous systems, there is a no input is available. But if you apply input to a system, it's called a forced system. Okay, sir. Another question is, what do you mean by self-excited self oscillation? Yeah. Self-excited oscillations means, uh, coming to that particular slide, a self-excited oscillation, uh, here we actually are, we are, this is actually a autonomous system in which the, uh, we will not give a, a input to the system. Uh, it's called and it's also not a force system. And the oscillations will, uh, will produce. For example, in an oscillator, an electronic oscillator, we can see that here we will not apply any input or signals to the system, but those oscillations will be produced. Such type of oscillations are called self-excited oscillations or limit cycle. Electronic amplifier is the best example of a, a, a limit cycle characteristics. Okay, sir, that was clear. We can continue with the next 20 minutes lecture. Okay, okay, thank you. Then I will continue the next section. Till now we have discussed uh, the introduction part and the type and characteristics. Then we move to the classification part. Here we actually classify the system into two. One is incidental and the other one is intentional. 
incidental mates, the non-linearities are actually inherently present in the rat. We, we will not give from outside. For example, saturation, friction, dead zone, backlash, and hysteresis. These are all examples of incidental, which is inherently present in a system. But if we give as an input uh, as some characteristics to the system, in order to modify the system characteristics, such type of nonlinearities are called intentional nonlinearities. For example, relay. We give the relay characteristics. Relay, relay nonlinearity to a system, then the system's characteristics will be modified. It is called intention. So this type of uh, major classification is like this. And we discuss one by one in detail. And the saturation nonlinearity this is very uh, practical as well as it's very popular nonlinearity. For example, in a DC motor, the magnetizing gear of a DC motor, we can see that when we apply current to the system, uh, to the motor, or the supply, supply to the system, to the motor, what happens? The uh, magnetizing flux will increase. And the flux will not increase in a linear manner to the whole range of input, which will be available only, only for a particular input in a linear manner, and then it will become a constant. It is called it is saturated. It means it is saturated. And here, this figure actually is clear from this figure. You can see <laughs> this is a linear region. A linear region. Uh, here, the input and output are in proportion, having proportionality. And after this particular point, what happens? It is approximated, or uh, yes, uh, the, the characteristics is remains in a uh, constant value. So that is called a saturation. It just happens in the positive side as well as in the negative side. So actually the total system characteristics can be divided into three. One is here a particular line of slope and another line of different slope and again another line of difference. So these three sloped uh, lines will constitute the total configuration. And in the case of an electronic amplifier, is also the same characteristics we can see. The amplifier output gain will not increase in a, in a linear manner after a particular input. Then after that particular input or that particular point, what happens? The amplifier gain will become a constant. Here, the signal, when we uh, see the signals, we can see this uh, blue line is actually, uh, blue line is actually a saturated uh, characteristics of an actuator. Because uh, the, uh, the, the uh, oscillations will not increase in a, in a high manner. Here, this is a red color that is represents a non, sorry, no, non saturated actuator. Because here it is, it is not at all uh, cutting, it just increases in a very, very uh, dangerous manner. So, here we can see the saturated system. Oscillate, but it will not diverge. These blue lines will not diverge as compared to the red line. But the red line is diverging and it is, it is moving in a dangerous manner. So that is called saturation. Uh, when we study the magnetic properties of a system, we will be normally looking to or normally come across the saturation properties. So this is one of the most important properties. Then, Uh, then the friction nonlinearity. Friction nonlinearity means friction is actually the opposing force. The friction will happen when the body is at rest or when the body is in motion. If the body is at rest, that friction or the opposing force is called as static friction. And when the body is in motion, the friction at that time is called a dynamic friction. And the maximum static friction is called a limiting friction. Above the limiting friction, the body will uh, start moving. And the dynamic uh, friction is again of two types, sliding as well as rolling. When a body slides over another, uh, we can see it's a, uh, there is a sliding friction in between them. And when a body rolls over other, then rolling friction will come. So here uh, in the figure, we can see 
uh, here as a velocity increases uh, just the beginning or when the body is at rest we have a particular force of force of friction here and when the body starts moving what happens the frictional force there but it remains a constant value here and here we can see uh, the cool of friction the cool of friction is the uh, friction due to the rubbing contacts of of two surfaces for example in electric motor we can see there are there are brushes as well as commutators and the brushes and commutators when in rubbing contact with each other there is a, a drag occurs that drag is called coulomb friction and after the velocity starts increasing or the body moves what happens the friction also increasing so here this is increasing in the opposite direction so this is called um, uh, friction here this friction is increasing but here the friction is constant in any way the friction is a non linearity this is not at all possible in a linear system then backlash sorry uh, then dead zone non linearity dead zone non linearity means the when we, when the input crosses a particular point or limit then only the output will be produced we we are giving input to a system as the input increases there is no change in the output for up to a particular time or for a, for a a particular input here we can see from 0 to a there is no change in output no output will happen but only after the input crosses this particular point a then what happens the output is increasing so this is in the forward direction as well as in the reverse direction so from minus a to a there is a dead zone the condition in which the output becomes zero say right? dead zone it is normally you can see in a dc servo motor or in different types of actuators etc okay then backlash non linear this backlash non linearity is normally happen or we can see in a gear system mechanical gear system here in mechanical gear systems we can see that there are two types of uh, trains one is uh, gear train one is gear train and other is gear train gear drive train and the gear train uh, and one gear train one gear one pulchakra mattoru pulchakra the move it appo ingane ulla ee rendu pulchakrangal kidayilulla ee oru gap undu idana actually backlash nu parayum is gap is called the backlash appo ee backlash ulladu undu pratheyam idu oru oru arthathil idu oru oru curse aanu endu vacha ee system lock aavadhi kan vendittu ये जो बैकलैश है तो दिस नॉन लिनियरिटी इज यूजफुल फॉर सम एक्सटेंशन बट अब अच्छा अदन जो रेंज कूड़िया बैकलैश ने आ जगह तो पूरा आना नहीं चाहिए तो विंटम प्रॉब्लम हो तो इधर जो नॉर्मली दिस दिस इफेक्ट इज सीन इन द मैकेनिकल ट्रांसमिशन सच एज इन द गियर ट्रेंड्स एंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द टीथ ऑफ द ड्राइव गियर एंड द ड्राइव ऑन गियर ड्राइव गियर एंड ड्राइव ऑन गियर दैट डिस्टेंस इज कॉल्ड बैकलैश is actually different from the magnetic stresses here uh, actually this, this is the a particular graph of that this is just like a closed curve but it is different from the uh, magnetic stresses and then we move to the relay non linearity another important non linearity relay non linearity means that it's an on off condition it's having two states when we going to when we see an ideal characteristics of a bidirectional relay we can see the bidirectional relay is having two states one is on state and the other one is off state if this is on state then it is called off state so two states are here on and off state this is the ideal case in actual case it will not be here and when this relay characteristic is combined with a hysteresis characteristic hysteresis characteristics we know that uh, we are giving some flex or input as a flex to a system when we move back the magnetizing force from that system uh, there remains a 
റസിഡിയൽ ഫ്ലക്സ് ഡെൻസിറ്റി ഇത് ഇത് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് പറ്റിയത് ഇസ് കാർഡ് റസിഡിയൽ ഫ്ലക്സ് ഡെൻസിറ്റി ആൻഡ് സച്ച് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് കാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ഈസ് കാർഡ് ക്രിസ്റ്റിയസ് സോ വെൻ വി മാർക്കറ്റൈസ് എ സിസ്റ്റം ദർ റിമൈൻഡ് സം മാർക്കറ്റിക് ഫ്ലക്സ് ദർ ആൻഡ് വെൻ വി മൂവ് ബാക്ക് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ നോട്ട് റിമൂവ് ഇറ്റ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ്ലി ദർ റിമൈൻഡ്സ് എ എ സ്മാൾ സോർട്ട് ഓഫ് മാർക്കറ്റിക് ഫ്ലക്സ് ദർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് കാൾഡ് ഹിസ്റ്റിയസ് and this hysteresis and compared to with this relay uh, it is like this because uh, here the relay characteristics is we can see here but the uh, hysteresis characteristics also we can see and this figure represents when we combine the uh, relay as well as the dead zone characteristics a relay field winding which is having a dead zone characteristics what happens uh this dead zone will we can see and again the relay characteristics will come this is a combined effort in uh, many systems we can see the combined efforts of different only can is uh, every tool or every device is not restricted to one only uh, it having multiple different varieties of non linearities are possible here. okay then okay then uh, relays in non linearity and actually uh, this is actually uh, one the characteristics part of the non linear systems and uh, time etra irunnu parayamo samayam kazhiyo no sir no. 15 minutes more 15 minutes undu sir okay okay but then we can uh, go to the state space model of the system nammala non linear system te petti padi maadi varna state space model endanu manasilla linear system ഒരു സ്റ്റേറ്റ് സ്പേസ് മോഡൽ ആണ് പിന്നെ നെക്സ്റ്റ് നോട്ട് ഇസ് ഈക്വൽ ടു എക്സ് പ്ലസ് ബി യു ഈസ് എ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് സ്പേസ് മോഡൽ വെയർ എ ആൻഡ് ബി ആർ മെട്രസസ് ആൻഡ് എക്സ് ഈസ് എ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് യു ഈസ് ദി ഇൻപുട്ട് എക്സ് നോട്ട് ഈസ് എ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഇൻ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് ഇത് ലീനിയർ സിസ്റ്റത്തിന്റെ മോഡൽ ആണ് നമുക്ക് അറിയാം പക്ഷെ നോൺ ലീനിയർ സിസ്റ്റം വരുമ്പോൾ ഇങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല സോ ദെൻ വി സേ നോൺ ലീനിയർ സിസ്റ്റം മോഡൽ uh here we use a state equation here this is state equation x dot is equal to f of t x u that means it is a function of time stage and input time stage and input and here output y is another function of h another function of time stage and input in this state equation as well as in the output equation both are functions of time stage and input but these are two different functions where x is nothing but uh, a column matrix of different state variables say x1 x2 etc up to xn having dimension n and u is the input yeah, or control effort and that input is also having different values u1 u2 etc up to up to u m u1 u2 etc up to u m we can say we here having m number of input variables and the function f of t x u is a function function of different uh, single functions like f1 f2 etc up to f so this is actually a state model because in uh, why we write in this way because rather nammal ipo linear system la anake ax plus b u na parayunnu endu cha x inde മാത്രം ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട ഒരു മെട്രിക്സ് ഉണ്ട് യുവിനും ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട വേറൊരു മെട്രിക്സ് ഉണ്ട് ഇവിടെ നമുക്ക് എക്സിന്റെ ഒരു പ്രത്യേക മെട്രിക്സ് ഒന്നും സെപ്പറേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല അതുപോലെ യുവിനും പ്രത്യേക മെട്രിക്സ് അതുകൊണ്ടാണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഈ എക്സ് യുവിന് തമ്മിൽ ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ആണ് പല എക്സുകൾ യുവിനെ ഡയറക്റ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നു യു അതുപോലെ എക്സിനെ ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നു അതുകൊണ്ട് എക്സും യുവും കൂടെ ഒരു ഒറ്റ ഒരു ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ആയിട്ട് മാത്രമേ നമുക്ക് റെപ്രസെന്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റൂ അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞു അൺഫോസ്ഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഇക്വേഷൻ ആണെങ്കിൽ ഇയർ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ആബ്സെൻസ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ടി ആൻഡ് എക്സ് ഉള്ളിൽ Uh, suppose if there is a state feedback u which is a function of t and x time and time state and time function ait nammal u ne edukku varanadu ee equation la substitute cheyanu vendu ee equation la substitute cheyumba is a function of t x u ne pagare sorry ee equation alla first aadhi kaadu ee equation ee equation la time or time of state um paranju t x um paranju ne u ne pagare gamma t x um substitute cheyidu then it is another function f till the t comma x 
thing. Suppose the system is autonomous, that means there is no input. It's an unforced system. Or the type invariant, because there is no effect of type on the system. Such type of systems is having an equation of x dot is equal to a f of x only. Thus, the function or the x dot change in x depends on state only. Whatever uh, happens in the input, there will not be any effect here. Uh, that type of systems are called autonomous systems and the different types of equations are, are represented here it's for your reference. And then, we, for example, we move to a pendulum, for example, and in the pendulum, it's actually a practical example. When we study this, the characteristics or the nature of this pendulum, we can identify what are the known linearities present here how the known linearity is uh, inherent in this system, and how it is represented, can uh, discuss in detail here. Here we can see, in a pendulum, uh, there, there is a bob which is uh, hanging from here, with a rope of length L, and theta is the angle between this uh, rope and the vertical direction and m is the mass, g is the acceleration due to gravity. Then uh, mg is the force, um, or acceleration force, or gravity force acting here. And here, uh, there is a frictional force is assumed, which is proportional to the speed of the mass, and uh, using the Newton's second law of motion in this tangential direction, uh, v, say in this ta tangential direction, we assume. Then we can see M ML theta double dot. This is the uh, tangential force is proportional to mg sin theta. mg sin theta means here uh, this is g and uh, if this force is moving in this direction with an angle theta, it is called mg cos theta and if the part of this mg uh, uh, in this the, the 90 degree sorry, Uh, anyway, in this direction, this direction, that is the angle degree, this mg sin beta. And this mg sin beta is, minus mg sin beta means, this is in the opposite to this forward direction, in this direction. So, this ml theta double dot is in this direction, and mg sin beta is in this direction. And kl theta dot, k is the spring constant, or the frictional constant, k is the frictional constant, and the L length theta dot is the uh, angular speed. So this is actually the modeling equation and then uh, when we discuss about the state model we can see theta is taken as a and theta is taken as a, as a first state variable x1 which has the angle we take it as a first state variable and the uh, dot theta that means the angular speed is taken as Another state variable x2. Here x2. X2 oh, here we can see. Uh, x2 is another state variable that is the uh, derivative of x1. So x2 and x1 are the two state variables. And the x2 dot that is theta double dot. x2 dot is theta double dot. It's equal to this equation. We derive this equation from the previous equation. And we say x equals x star is an equilibrium point of this particular system. That means x of t0 equals to x star. That means at the beginning time t0, the state remains at x star. State remains at x star. As the time increases from t0, or uh, t0 and higher time, or as the time increases, what happens? The state of the system will not change. There are also x star. That means the state of the system will not change. There will not be any change in this, the state of the system. Such type of states are called equilibrium points. So uh, that is called equilibrium point. And in the autonomous system, that is the systems in which u is absent, there the equilibrium points are the real roots of this equation. F, f of x equals zero. 
when we take the real roots of this equation, we can see the equilibrium points from this type of equations. And here, the equilibrium point is a point where the state of the system will remain at a particular value forever for all future times. It will be constant. That is called equilibrium point. Oh. oh, okay, okay, then, okay, yeah, in this particular case, in this pendulum case, the equilibrium points we can find out by taking the each uh, equation to zero, say x1 dot equals zero and x Dot equals zero. x1 dot equals 0 means x2 is 0. And x2 dot equals 0, this equation is 0. This equation is 0 means x2 is 0 already. This time is, is cancelled here. And uh, this step is equated to 0. Then sin x1 0 means sin x1 0 means. What is this meaning? Sin x1 0 implies that uh, the value of x1 can be 0 or pi or minus pi or 2 pi or minus 2 pi etc. So sinusoidal values uh, will have value of 0 at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi etc. So there are different number of equilibrium points by n pi. So in general we say n pi and 0 for the origin is another equilibrium point. So these are the equilibrium points of a symbol or a pendulum. And here we can see that there are number of equilibrium points multiple equilibrium points and they are isolated because in the nearby region there are no other equilibrium points. So, here are an example of isolated uh, multiple equilibrium points. A continuum of equilibrium points. And we can uh, study the analysis of a non-linear system is actually based on the study behavior of the system around its equilibrium points. So, that is about the um, non-linear system of a simple pendulum. Then uh, another topic, control, design, techniques, topics. And sir, what is the time now? Uh, sir, we have reached the last five minutes. So we will take on few questions and conclude today's session. So I have okay, a few okay. questions. Yeah. Uh, so one question is, what is soft and hard spring? A uh, soft and a hard spring. Yeah. Actually, I uh, just am um, to the slides. Uh, it's uh, nothing but uh, the, the hardness of the spring. That's all it means. I'm, I'm uh, not much aware of that thing. Uh, I think that uh, if the characteristics are strong uh, or the spring force is strong, it's called hard, hard spring and if it is uh, smooth or soft, it's called soft spring. Can I say that the value of K dash, uh, these characteristics, characteristics will depend on the value of K dash. If it is positive, then it's hard spring. Because the, here is an example Okay, uh, here is an example of a spring system and sorry, uh, the mathematical equation gov governing the spring characteristics is shown here. That is here. Uh, this is the mathematical characteristics. And uh, this k dash is actually depends on the nonlinear characteristics and the value of k dash will depend on the, the amplitude, the, the stiffness of the spring. When the value of k dash changes, the uh, stiffness of the spring also changes. It is hard in some time and hard soft in other time. That is the only difference. Okay, sir, that was clear. So could you please summarize today's session from beginning? Can, oh, could you please summarize yeah. session within few minutes? Oh, okay, okay, sure, sir. Actually, we have not go in detail to the non-linear systems. We have just mentioned an introduction about a non-linear system. And then its types, characteristics, and other properties. 
and these uh, uh, characteristics characteristics are very important and we may have different different types of sessions for each characteristic but due to the time limiting time constraint we limited with only one slide and the major characteristics are uh, major characteristics of a system of a knowledge layer system is saturation friction depth zone backlash and hysteresis these are these are the incidental knowledge layers and injunction is the relay characteristics and uh, uh, there are some important uh, other characteristics characteristics also, also i mentioned here for example uh, the system will not obey the superposition principle and there are isolated equilibrium points are here the finite time characteristics and harmonic analysis and then limit cycle jump response frequency entrainment synchronous coaching these are all different types of characteristics and this is actually just a beginning of this fast topic and when one wants to study more about this is actually uh, some help may uh, will some in in some way it will help you because you are the students you are studying uh, in the six class the beginning of this knowledge year and when we go to the higher uh, topics or higher research level uh, we will come into more exposure with these topics and anyway i acknowledge all the students all the audiences present on online throughout the world uh, to watch and hear this presentation in a very patient manner and also i congratulate uh, my sincere thanks to the coordinators especially the asap